We're yet to see his equal, and perhaps we never will. A record-breaking, wicket-taking star with a gift for the spectacular. The game of cricket has never known anyone quite like him. He was the greatest cricketer of my generation. And he just got it. He's just got that special X factor. He was the greatest bowler of all time, without a doubt. In the early 1990s, a young man from Australia revived and mastered an art which had lain dormant for decades, leg spin bowling. And in doing so, he changed the game of cricket forever. He was just a, the ultimate attacking weapon. He was a wonderful bowler, magnificent. He's, he's the best I've ever seen. Shane Keith Warne would finish his career with a record 708 test wickets. Yet he came to be defined by his very first delivery on English soil in 1993. Forever known as the ball of the century. I didn't really get a good look at it and had, didn't really have a, an initial appreciation of how good it was until way later, uh, once we saw the replay. I mean, out in the ground, Warney's first ball, you beauty, you know, one for none, thanks for coming. But then the boys started to talk, you know, particularly Ian Healy behind the, uh, the wickets as the keeper, sort of saying, oh, AB, that was, that was seriously good delivery. It just swung enough to bring Gat towards it just enough. His front foot didn't move out just enough. His bat was just a bit slow. It spun just enough to hit just the top of the off stump. And uh, it was <laughs> you know, history. You ask Warren, what would you like to bowl to Mike Gatting first up? Um, you'd like it to drift in about a yard, pitch outside leg, see Ian Healy going down the leg side to take it, hit the top of off stump and watch Mike Gatting look and not realise he's out. And it was just one of those remarkable moments and heightened by the fact, of course, it was his first ball. Um, and I, there was a sense there that a great leg spinner had been born. From that moment on, Shane Warne was public property. Warne was this uh, new, new national hero. And then, of course, the cricket world was all over it as well. People wanted to know more about who is this bloke? You know, what, what does he do? You know, when he's not playing cricket, and so the, the, the scrutiny became more and more obvious for someone like him compared to, you know, previous eras. A gregarious personality, sporting a shock of blonde hair, Warren came from humble beginnings, but quickly made his mark. Word of his rare talent spread. First impressions, uh, he's just a likeable bike, straight away when you meet him. Uh, he was a different version back then, he was a bit more roly-poly. Looked like a you know a bit of a beach bum with the, the long blonde hair um, compared to the you know sophisticant uh, bloke you get now. But uh, he, he is just a likable bloke straight away. Once I got to know Shane Warne, I wasn't surprised that his that his rise to the top was was very quick. I mean, the first thing about him was he was a pretty accurate leg spinner. You could see that from the boundary. But once I chatted to him a bit, you, you quickly thought, hello, this guy's, he's got a very good cricket brain and he, you know, he knows what's going on. After only seven first-class matches for Victoria, in 1992, Warren was selected to play for his country against India, the 350th test cricketer to play for Australia. But he struggled against the class of Ravi Shastri and a young Sachin Tendulkar, taking just one wicket for 150 runs. It wasn't as if it was bad bowling. He wasn't bowling half trackers, full tosses, that type of stuff. They, they just played him very well. He was the unfinished product when he first played cricket for Australia. Um, so it was just a matter of, um, you know, like learning. I thought to myself, uh, I just hope they persevere with him a bit because all spinners need a bit of tender, loving care. 
and they need support from their captain, but they also need support from the selectors. The selectors did persevere, picking Warren for the 1992 tour to Sri Lanka, when his true potential first became apparent. They probably needed 20 odd to win, they were six or seven wickets down, and uh, threw Warney the ball, and I mean, within a blink of the eye, he had three or four wickets, and uh, we win the game, you know, that, uh, against, the, against the flow. And uh, Warney then got a lot of confidence out of that situation, being thrown the ball in that circumstances to start with, and then performing. And, uh, you know, he grew an extra leg from that point. And probably that was the, the turning point for him. When he finished up bowling Australia to victory in the second innings, uh, I think that was probably the most crucial thing in, in, in Shane Warne starting to really believe in himself. Warne's blossoming power as an attacking weapon became clear in 1992. Australia faced the West Indies, at that time the world's best team, and the stage for the second test was his home ground, the MCG. I still remember the sliding flipper that just ran along the ground for Richie Richardson's wicket. Um, that seven for in Melbourne, uh, he, he never looked back. He, he just cemented what he'd started in Sri Lanka. And then, you know, from then on, if you were going to get on top of Shane Warne, you had your hands full. Nobody recognised the fact that it was a flipper. The ball that he deliberately the ball out of the front of his hand, that pitch short, and you thought, yes, this is short, I'm going to get lots of runs here. I just skidded on. Everybody thought, oh, that's a bad ball, he was lucky. We didn't know, and that was Shane Warne. Shane Warne kept on developing different deliveries that people, after a while, discovered that, yeah, that's a legitimate delivery. And he's such a fast learner. His own confidence started to come out. His own personality started to develop. And, you know, it, it was just a rapid rise, really, when you think about from start to, you know, becoming a world-class bowler, very short space of time. Maybe one of the most relevant things that's ever been about the Warren career is his early nickname, Hollywood, which we didn't really use, we just called him Warney, but, but Hollywood, they're, they're